Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us for Jesus, the healer today. And my goodness, we have been having a good time around the word. Amen. You know, the thing I like, the, uh, I so value about the word, it puts an expectation on us. Yes. Yes. Right? Um, too many times people have an idea that it's all on God for our success, mm -hmm. but we are co-laborers with right. God. And uh, the word shows us how to come up and get in the and live in the highest flow, yes. live the best life. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so we have been on a subject. We're talking about reverence and honor and how they're connected to miracles. They're connected to healing. Yes. They're connected yes. to the power of God. Yes. And uh, we're, we've taken a statement that Brother Hagen made. And he said this, when reverence and honor are restored, there will be a restoration and multiplication of the miraculous power of God. So notice this, the miraculous power of God is not independent of other things. It doesn't just happen randomly on its own. When there's an attitude and an atmosphere of reverence and honor, then the, ma the miracle power of God is not hindered in flowing. Amen. So um, reverence and honor represents our attitudes. Also, it represents an atmosphere. Yes. Amen. We can control that atmosphere. Yes. We can control that attitude. Right. Amen. Amen. And so greater flows of God's power calls for greater reverence. Right. And greater reverence accesses greater flows of God's power. Amen. Now, there's just no, no getting away from that. I would say this... I'm not just talking about in church services, but in our own individual lives. I want the power of God in my life. Amen. I want miracle power Amen. being able to flow unhindered in my life. That means I'm going to live in a flow of reverence and honor. Our local churches as church families together, um, having a, a, a flow of reverence and honor in our services. Yes. Amen. Um, then the body of Christ at large in a flow of reverence and honor. And can I say, when I talk about reverence and honor, I don't always mean quiet. That's good. Because sometimes people have the idea that if there's any kind of noise going on in a service, it's, in a service, it's irreverent. Um, you know, Jesus would, he would go in and shake up some settings, yeah. right? Yes. In the synagogues, yes. healings happening. And the religious leaders did not like it. And they thought that he was irreverent because he would be healing on the Sabbath day, right? They thought it was a dishonor to the law. They thought that it was irreverent. Um, and what they defined reverence and honor as was robbing from the people. That there could be no flow of power because they didn't like it when people were receiving miracles when Jesus was present. Right. So Jesus present, healings happening, that's a flow of reverence and honor. Right. Amen. 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 So when we talk about reverence and honor, don't think that I'm meaning quiet and no movement. Right. Amen. Amen. What's reverent and honor? The word getting its way. Amen. The plan of God being fulfilled in our yes. services. Amen. God being put first yes. in, the, in the seat that is his. What is that? The first seat, the highest seat yes. in our services yes. that we're, we want him, him honored. Yes. Amen. Amen. We want him to have his way. Amen. That's reverence and honor. Amen. Amen. Now, when we talk about reverence and honor, the law of reverence and honor is seen in the scripture that God says that those who honor me, 
I will honor. They that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. And that's 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. So notice this. First of all, let me say this. Honor means weighty. Mm -hmm. It means something heavy, heavy with importance, heavy with value. To have a high regard for or to treat something as important, to give it priority. Mm -hmm. Honor is to put something first. To honor the Lord is to put him first. Amen. 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 Uh, Reverence means high respect Mm -hmm. and honor. It's an attitude of worship. Amen. Amen. Now, this law of honor, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? What you sow, you reap. You sow honor, you reap honor. You sow dishonor, you reap dishonor. Amen. It's not God withholding someone, something from someone. It's them reaping what they sowed. So this law will work for us Mm -hmm. by what we honor. God will receive honor, Mm -hmm. but it'll work against us. Uh, If we don't honor, if we despise Mm -hmm. what ought to be honored, we will be lightly esteemed. So um, to despise something is to not treat something as important that is important. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say I'm making a conscious effort to say I despise that, that word that I heard taught today. No, it's not that. It's just not treating it as important. That's right. yeah. so good. That is one way of despising the word. Yes, that's good. Amen. Because we would never purposefully say, I'm, 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 I'm intentionally going to despise what God says. No, right. we wouldn't. But to not treat it as important right. is an act of despising it. Yes. So it, not treating it as important as it should be, not giving it enough honor to, ch- to treat it lightly or trivial, right. being trivial toward it. Um, it's important that we not only love God, but we honor God. Yes. Now notice this people, we can say we love God, but when we honor him, it's going to show up yes. in something we do. Yes. We don't treat these things lightly because we don't treat him lightly. Amen. 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 If we treat God lightly, then God will treat us lightly. But li- listen to this, because you have, to, you have to get this following statement that I'm going to make. If we treat God lightly, then God will only treat us lightly because that's all we're allowing him to do for us. Oh, wow. If we treat him, let me say this. It, it, here's a cup. If this cup had a lid, it doesn't. So let my hand represent that lid, okay? If I don't remove the lid, no one can pour anything in. If I remove the lid a little bit, Mm -hmm. up a little, then a little can come in. Mm -hmm. If I go like this and remove the lid, full access. Right? Um treating God lightly, mm. a lid. Mm. Now he's try- he wants to get something into us. Mm-hmm. Can we? Can he? No. Can he? No. no, because how we treat him mm-hmm. is what determines how we can receive from him. Oh, he's so, good. so it's not God withholding, it's us stopping him by how we responded mm-hmm. to him. Amen. He will not force himself in, on us. Mm-hmm. He won't even force his best on us. So if we, if we treat him lightly, we put a lid. That's how we're, that's all we're permitting him to do for us. But if we take off the lid, we honor him. We give him his proper, his proper place. We remove that lid. There's nothing stopping him from treating us honorably because there's full access. I don't know if that helps you. Yeah. That's, yes. I, I, I don't, I, God isn't like humans. You know, humans say this, you treat me bad, I'll treat you bad. That's not how God operates. Right. That if we treat him lightly, well, I'm just going to treat you lightly. No, if we treat him lightly, we're only permitting him to treat us lightly. Amen. That's all we'll permit him to do. Amen. In Jesus' hometown, listen, Jesus would have loved his hometown people in a particular way. Mm -hmm. He grew up with them. 
He knew them. How tight communities were back then, especially because they relied on each other for for help. You know, in these, today we we have a a measure of community, but not like maybe in times past, because some of our advances have made us more dependent on our own selves. Mm -hmm. You know, back then you depended on your neighbors. You didn't have the same kind of equipment and stuff to to carry out certain activities. And you needed the help of someone. Jesus would have been that activity of help in his in his hometown. He would have received of the activity of others that would have been part of just his growing up years. You know he went to his hometown and wanted them to receive. If anybody received, he wanted them to receive. But he went to his own hometown. And it says he could there do no mighty work. Yeah. That's right. Why? Because they dishonored him. That's, yes. right. That's, right. Amen. That's all. That's because they dishonored him, right. they determined yeah. how honor could treat them. Right. That's yeah. good. That's right. He didn't. Well, they yes. did. Yes. Mm-hmm. He came to heal them. Yes. And left not being able to minister to but a few wow. yes. with right. minor ailments is what the word says. So because they treated Jesus lightly, that's all they could receive of him. If they would have treated him honorably, then they would have received all that he had for them. Amen. Amen. The more we honor and the more we reverence God, the more we're giving God permission to bring the miraculous into our lives. When we don't reverence and honor him and his word and his power, then we're saying no, no miracle power for me. Yes. People don't realize that's that right. <laughs> this is how it works. Yeah. I said, this is how it works. Yeah. Um, in our services in our, and in our lives, imagine Jesus as being present. He is yes. by his spirit. Right. But yes. if we would imagine him present, right. yeah. listen, God gave you your imagination. That's right. mm-hmm. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, casting down imaginations, casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So it's not saying you cast down every imagination. It's casting down imaginations that are against the word. That's right. But God gave you your imagination so you could envision things. So why? Because that's part of vision. Uh It's part of seeing where you're headed. You don't let your imagination take the lead. (laughs) The word takes the lead. But I'm saying this, that you can, if you're on a sick bed, you can imagine yourself up. Don't cast down that imagination. Embrace that imagination, right? right. Uh, in, In our imaginations, we need to imagine, okay, I don't see him standing here but if I could imagine Jesus sta- standing here and listening to this conversation, would I be saying what I'm getting ready to say? Yes. Um, I had a minister tell me, and they got to ask another, he was a young pastor, and he got to ask a, a man, there was a seasoned minister, my, 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 the miracles that happened in his ministry. And... Um, this young pastor asked this seasoned minister, said, what, what, what is it that you think contributes to you being able to flow with that miracle power, the way God pow- God's power flows through you? And he said, easy. He said, I live my life imagining Jesus that he's right here. So good. So good. He said, if I'm in a car, I imagine he's right there. Yeah. And I talk to him as though he's right there. I think of him as though he's right there. I minister to the people as though he's right there. Now we know this, the greater one's in us, but you understand as a human to imagine that he's present. Now, when we live our life mindful, he is present, but we imagine him right there in the room, how it would elevate our honor and our reverence in our life in our services, right? So uh, nothing or no one is as important to God as as God and as in serving God. There's nothing else. My job is not as important. Mm. 
Nothing else is as important as the plan right. of God right. for my life. Amen. Nothing, 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 Amen. nothing. Yeah. The plan of God, when you, when you honor that plan, you're honoring God who gave you that plan. Amen. To veer off from his plan is to dishonor the one who joined that plan to your life. Yes. Right. So now, see, many times we don't look at it as that way, right. but that's yes. what we're doing, maybe not Amen. purposefully, right. but that's where it's arriving us. Yes. Yes. Amen. Um, can I say this? The order for my life, God and his plan, my family, yes. the work of the ministry. Amen. When my husband was here, I didn't ignore my family to do the work of the ministry, but the plan of God was paramount with us. Mm -hmm. And when my husband left this earth, the plan didn't leave with him. Therefore, I knew what to get up for every day. Amen. I wasn't bumping into walls Amen. going, what do I do with my life? Right. The plan was still intact. Amen. I honored the plan of Amen. God. Amen. Why? Because by honoring the plan, I honor him Amen. who gave me and authored that plan for my life. Amen. 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 Honor the plan yes. because by doing that, you're honoring God. And when you do that, because people will enter your life and people will exit your life, right. but the plan is eternally linked oh, yes. Yes. to be fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Don't ignore it and don't exchange it right. for anyone. Right. Yes. Don't exchange it for any profession. Yes. Don't exchange it for any ideal, yes. any dream of your own, because right. the plan of God will give you more than any yes. dream right. man could That's dream right. for himself. Yes. This is, this is part of honor. Yes. Amen. This is part of reverencing and it gives us the best life. Uh -huh. Amen. So Amen. Um, anything tied to God and anything that is his, treat it with honor and respect. Yes. So right. His plan, Amen. the plan of God for my life came from him. Yes. Ah, you can't you. remove them from each yes. other. Amen. When I honor the plan by walking it out, oh, I honor yes. my father. Amen. Amen. When, I, when I treat that plan as disposable, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm not being honorable. Not as I should be. Now, inconvenience and sacrifice is the mark of honor. Let me explain that. Those who honor God will allow themselves to be inconvenienced to obey what he says. Amen. If we'll only do something that we know God is instructed of us, commanded of us, as long as it's convenient, that's dishonorable. Yes, that's right. Honor will say, I'll inconvenience myself in any way I need to, to fulfill the plan. Because I'm not living for convenience, I'm living for the plan. Amen. 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 So inconvenience and sacrifice, I'll make sacrifices. And can I tell you this? Sacrifices, when they're in the plan, only end up blessing your life. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, for the first four years, when my husband and I started the church in Murrieta, California, started it in 1991. For four years, I pastored that church, not realizing I was the pastor. You've heard this. If you've heard the story, I don't. I don't have time for it now. But I pastored for four years. I had no idea God would really have me as the long-term pastor. Um, and I did it for 25 years. But the first four years, I didn't receive a salary. Why? Because many times when you're in beginning stages, you make some sacrifices. Right. But I did not let the sacrifice determine whether or not I would obey God in pastoring. I didn't say, well, I'm not getting paid, so I'm not going to do it. Right. No, because inconvenience mm -hmm. and sacrifice is the mark of honor. When I showed God, I'd pastor for four years, and I never brought up anything about a salary. I never even mentioned to my husband. I haven't seen a paycheck. I, I never mentioned it. Mm -hmm. But after four years, God spoke to my husband, and he said, until this church treats the pastor appropriately financially, it won't flourish. It won't be blessed as it ought. 
God brought it up. Amen. But he waited four years to bring it up. Why? Because I wasn't doing this for pay. Right. I was doing it because I loved him. Amen. And I loved the plan. Yes. And God took care of us. Yes. Now, my husband got a paycheck from the ministry. Don't misunderstand me because we had the local church, then we had the traveling side. So I'm, I'm not saying there was no income. I'm saying that I did not base my obedience on whether I, I got paid. Yeah, that's good. That's Why? Good. The plan was fulfilling to me. Amen. You know, there's nothing worse than getting paid for something that's unfulfilling in your life. Oh because you're, you're, many times people are cheated because they think that the pay is an even exchange. Oh, wow. so good. You couldn't pay me enough to leave the plan of God. Right. Because the plan of God is what fulfills and you lay down your head at night on your pillow and you go, my insides are so happy. <laughs> my insides are at peace. And no amount of pay or lack of pay can touch that. And that's what I'm talking about. There may be seasons in a life of obedience that you make some sacrifices. But that's not, that's not for the rest of your life. That was for four years out of almost 40 years of being in the ministry. So I'm not saying that you're going to struggle and everything's going to be hard to obey God. That's not true. But I'm saying that God will permit some seasons just to see where does our honor live. Does it live with his plan or does it live with our finances? His plan comes before finances. And when I put his plan first, I'll never lack for finances. Never. Amen. 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 So that's what I mean when I say inconvenience and sacrifice are the mark of honor. Yes. That honor says, I don't have to be, it doesn't have to be convenient before I obey it. Okay. It doesn't have to be what I choose mm-hmm. yeah. before I obey it. When it comes out of God, I honor him enough to just do what he says. Amen. 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 Um, God and his things and things associated with him are to be the heaviest on the scale compared to anything else. What's that mean? I don't, I, my, my profession is not near as weighty as him and his call for my life. Amen. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. People need to uh, check their scales sometimes. What are they calling weighty in their life? Amen. What are they putting first? And this is something we have to, we have to evaluate at times because sometimes we can not intend to, but things get out of place. And they kind of slowly drift that way. Well, praise the Lord. Now, um, another thing is how we're treating God's people is how we're treating him. How we're treating those that God put in our lives, our pastor, those who have some kind of a position of authority over our life. Mm -hmm. That's how we're treating him. How we honor our pastor is how we'll receive from our pastor. Amen. Amen. This is honor and reverence touches into every single aspect. Um, That's one of the reasons my husband and I never had problems with our, with our sons in the sense of we kept them in the local church. We didn't, we never discussed issues in front of our children even though we were the heads of the ministry. Why? We were not going to show any of the, the congregation members in a bad light. Right. Why? Because we're all growing. Amen. We're all growing. Right. None of us have arrived. Amen. And so I wouldn't discuss anything that would show our people in a bad light mm-hmm. in, front of our, in front of our children. It matters that you don't talk bad about your boss in front of the children and right. talk bad about family members in front yes. of the children. But how much more don't talk bad about those who are spiritual voices, the body of Christ, your pastor in a bad light because something will go into those children that, that we might have an issue later with. Amen. Another thing, when we honor God, we're not too busy to spend time with him. Amen. We're to honor him also with our time, you know, and can I say this? there also becomes a skill of bringing him into every aspect of our day. It's not just time alone. Yes, we should have time alone, but learn to bring him into every single flow of our daily life. What's that mean? Acknowledge him all throughout the day. Turn our attention toward him. Can I tell you in a marriage, 
a marriage, a healthy marriage is made up of both locations, time alone, away from other people, but time together with other people. Right? right? Yes. Okay. And there are expressions of affection that you may have when you're with someone else, with your spouse. You may hold their hand, put your arm around them. Um, but when you're, when you're at home alone, you, it, it, that, that will go even further. Right with your expression of intimacy or love towards someone in that private time, it's the same thing with God. Mm -hmm. If your only time with God is with a bunch of other people around, That's you're only right. going to have a certain degree of intimacy with right. God, right. a certain kind of exchange with God. Yes. Yes. So our spiritual life needs both time alone with him and then bringing him into right. every single flow of our daily life. Amen. Because when we bring him into every single flow of our life, acknowledging him all throughout the day, it elevates everything we do. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, you don't want to miss next time. I'm enjoying this time with you. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're learning together, right? Amen. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Greatness of God's Power, she teaches how God wants us to know His power that is in our direction. It belongs to us. We cannot live the life God authored for us without His power. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. I invite you to get my book called The Healer Divine. This book is a study of the healings that happened under Jesus' earthly ministry. We study them line by line, word by word. And when we are skillful in understanding how Jesus ministered healing, then it helps us to be skillful in receiving healing, but also ministering healing. So we invite you to go to JesusTheHealer.org and purchase your copy today. God bless you. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Paducah, Kentucky at World Harvest Church of Paducah, May 5th through the 9th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. We will never receive from God beyond the measure of our response. In this book, Responding to the Holy Spirit, Nancy Dufresne instructs us how to properly respond to God and the moving of His Spirit. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. We invite you to join us at World Harvest Church, home of Dufresne Ministries in Marietta, California, located at 23109 Palomar Street, Marietta, California. This is a word and spirit church. Join us in person or online Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific time. For more information, go to DufresneMinistries.org.